the war on journalism in Belmarsh, the war on journalism in Gaza. I haven't written much about Julian Assange lately because I've been so fixated on what's been happening in Gaza. But we should all be acutely aware that the 20th and 21st of February may be the WikiLeaks founder's final chance to avoid extradition to the United States to face persecution for the crime of good journalism. Assange and his legal team will face two high court judges during the two-day hearing in London, which will then determine whether the UK will allow the Australian journalist to be dragged to the US in chains for a crooked show trial and cast into one of the world's most draconian prison systems for exposing the crimes of the world's most powerful government. Some U.S. lawmakers are attempting to block the extradition from the other side with House Resolution 934, which asserts that regular journalistic activities are protected under the First Amendment and that the United States ought to drop all charges against an attempt to extradite Julian Assange. The fight to free Assange is a fight to protect press freedoms around the world, since the U.S. is using the case in an attempt to set a legal precedent for extraditing and imprisoning any journalist or publisher anywhere in the world who shares information with the public that the U.S. doesn't want shared. And it's worth mentioning that this fight is not actually separate from the fight against Israel's efforts to keep journalism out of Gaza by assassinating reporters and blocking the press from entering the enclave. It's also not separate from humanity's overall struggle to build a truth-based civilization, nor ultimately from our greater struggle to become a conscious species. All throughout humanity, there are pushes toward truth and toward seeing, and pushes toward secrecy and darkness. In the press, we see both, the authentic journalists like Assange who want all that is hidden to be made transparent, and the propagandists of the mainstream media who work to obfuscate and distort the truth. Those who seek the emergence of a harmonious and truth-based society want as much visibility into what's really happening as possible, while tyrannical power structures like the U.S. Empire and Israel are constantly working to dim the lights. Wherever you see domination and abuse, you see efforts to limit perception and keep human minds from seeing and understanding what's going on. It's true of empires. It's true of governments. It's true of cult leaders. It's true of abusive spouses, and it's true of the unpleasant dynamics within our own psyches that we would rather not look at. The less seeing there is, the more abusiveness is possible. The more seen things become, the closer we get to freedom. I'm no prophet, but I strongly suspect that our future as a species will be determined by the outcome of this struggle. If the impulse toward truth and seeing wins out, we are probably headed toward a world of health and harmony. If the impulse to keep everything confused and hidden and unconscious wins, we are probably headed for dystopia and extinction. In any case, all we can do is fight to make things more visible so that health and harmony become possible. Fight to make things conscious within ourselves. Fight to keep journalism legal in the shadow of the empire. Fight to spotlight Israel's atrocities in Gaza. Fight to make the unseen seen. Fight to bring humanity into the light of consciousness.